What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, you know that on this show that we do, we always got to discuss those individuals who just want to hide their stuff up when it's just not necessary. And there's certain ways you can describe your excitement for something that you're a part of that you're going to reveal, right? You always hype. But some people just go a little bit further and, and say, this is, the bombs are going to be at D23. We're going to, the biggest, uh, what was it called? Um, San Diego Comic-Con is going to be uh, tame compared. You know, this sort of talk, Brian, is like, you better not disappoint. Leading up to D23, all people were talking about was the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Let's call it mutants for now. And they were nowhere to be found, Brian. All we got was a director name that we already knew. <laughs> That you could have just put it in, put it on the website, whatever, but it didn't need to be a big announcement. That wasn't, if you, if you were expecting us to be happy about that, then I don't know what you're thinking. Brian, this was a disappointment in that you led us to believe that we were, we were going to get some big announcements. We got some nice announcements, things to look forward to, but these weren't huge announcements. What are your thoughts, Brian, on the lack of info for Fantastic Four and the mutants? Happiness is a product of your expectations. That's it. <laughs> I mean... You know, I we, we don't mean to trivialize, I mean, I, you know, on another day, a great looking secret invasion trailer, um, some very promising, te you know, teased footage from Wakanda Forever and Loki season two and, you know, Quantumania and uh, Ironheart and, you know, a, a very cool looking werewolf by night trailer. Like on another day, that would be a lineup. <laughs> Yeah. But when, on the one hand, right before Comic-Con hits, there's this leak. Marvel's punting their big announcements to D23. Okay. And then they, they, they give you a lot of content at D23 to where you're like, oh, so if that's the warm-up. Yeah, yeah. And then they show you phase six, and there's all those empty slots. And then... In the weeks leading up to this event, you start hearing some very big names being thrown around for casting announcements. Denzel Washington, Giancarlo Esposito, Henry Cavill, Jody Coma, huge announcements, John Krasinski, all sorts of announcements being thrown around. And you know that not all of them are true, right? We know that. But it was just coming fast and furious to where you felt like even if it was all smoke, you would at the very least be introduced to the real Fantastic Four on stage. Like at the very least, like, okay, maybe, they're, maybe, they're, maybe the rumor mill is all wrong, over four, but we're gonna meet Matt Shackman and we're gonna meet the first family. And it didn't happen, Pablo. None of it happened. And I mean, you wouldn't have known that the mutants were in the MCU. You wouldn't have known the Fox merger had closed yet based upon this event. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we mean by letdown and disappointment is you have, I think you summed it up really well. It was like you had Marvel guilty of raising the stakes too much. And then the fan base and some of these sites and listen, we're not always going to be right, so I want to be careful with this, but some yeah. of the rumor 
mongering that was going on was out of control yeah. into this event. So we are where we are, which is the rumor mill will continue, but I think you just got to take it all with a grain of salt and realize a lot of the stuff we thought we would get at this event, it's just not that far along. I think that's the reality. It's just not that far along. Brian, what did we say a long time ago regarding when we'll see the X-Men? It's gonna be a while. Because what? They gotta get this absolutely right. They can't afford to mess this up. They can't afford yeah. to, to, to rush this process. Kevin can't afford to and, and that, for this to fail. No. no. And it has to be sustainable. I said it when the Esposino popped up. I'm like, we're really leading with a 65-year-old Professor X out of the gate. And then I see a Denzel Washington. And, like, and there would be such irony to that, by the way, because that has been rumored for years. years. Denzel Washington is Magneto. And, 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 and in a maybe appropriate bit of irony, Denzel Washington should have won the Oscar for playing Malcolm X in 1992. He lost to uh, Pacino, who got the kind of the Lifetime Achievement Award for Senate of the Woman after he got robbed in Godfather II two decades earlier. But Denzel should have won for playing Malcolm X. And so if someday he wound up playing Magneto, who was the comics-inspired version of Malcolm X, that would have actually seemed fitting. But Denzel Washington... If you're gonna have him play Magneto for 10 years, A, there's no precedent for him ever doing anything like that in his career. Yeah. He'd be in his 70s, he'd be approaching 80. Like, I understand that like Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart did it, but that's not the generation of X-Men that I think that Marvel wants to go with here. So I'm sorry, yeah. people. Like, I know it's a fun thing to throw around, but it is not realistic in my mind to have guys like that playing these parts for 10, 15 years, which is what you need. And what Marvel's looking for. That's why when people when, when people say, "Oh, I want to see this actor, this actor," all of these actors that you name are famous, well into their careers, probably too old. And you know what was funny to me, Brian, when they they were showing these rumors, they showed a young Denzel Washington. It's like, yo, what are you doing, yo? This is over. This is not him anymore. It'll be dope. I'm pretty, yeah. He's done one franchise in his career. It's the Equalizer. And by the way, part of the reason he does that, other than the money, which they, is great, is he is a regular working partner with Antoine Fuqua, of course, who directed Training Day, for which he won his Leading Man Academy Award. So he, he, he owes something to that guy, and he works yeah. with him. He's willing to do sequels. He's never, ever shown an appetite for this. He has no need for it. He is still considered one of the greatest thespians alive. Listen, I'd love to see him try a role like this. It's just, not it's this. not realistic. It's just not realistic for what this part is going to require. It might, this part might require, like we, we, we're talking about the Jonathan Majors experiment, which I really think it's like the great experiment of like yeah. one actor tackling roles in television, film, and trying to just lift an entire sequence of Marvel basically on his own. Magneto, Professor, they could be like that for the, for the experts. Denzel Washington's not doing that at this stage of his life. Nah. Nah. The, I think the, it, the pressure would be too big. Um, and to try to belt out performances for the next 10, 15 years as this character. It's just not... Not feasible. And not realistic. And people just need to like, you know, like... And, and, and people just... I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Some, when I, it's the stuff that I read sometimes and people be like, yeah, there's no... Oh, oh, giants be, I'm like, yo, these dudes is old, yo. I want a, a dude that's going to be there for 10, 15, 20 years almost do this role you know not the i mean some else world sort of stuff maybe i don't know that one off yeah maybe i don't know but i mean you got the multiverse you can do whatever you want but something that's gonna last needs to be some they need to the way they did look at how you started marvel and this is how you start the mutants and that whole world um 
fine. Fantastic Four. Yeah. You, yeah. Let's get back to Fantastic Four because okay. to me this was the bigger disappointment. I, I thought, you know, the Shackman news when the Shackman news broke and we kind of had the sense when he when he left Star Trek that this was real and this was happening. I don't know, for some reason in my head, because Shackman had already worked in the MCU with WandaVision, I, I guess I felt like they would have been maybe further along or just closer on the casting alongside his appointment. Um, but I think it's clear they that like they don't have anyone signed. Like I think it's like it feels to me like it's Feige and it's Shackman, and only now are they getting in the room and really kind of narrowing down their finalists for the four roles, which I, I have to admit, I, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised. If you, given that this movie is, you know, originally was supposed to come out uh, next year uh, and is now, you know, it's not going to be coming out until 2024 now, but it just, it does feel like it's taking a long time to kind of get this off the ground. Do you think, Brian, people who they've approached for these roles are thinking the same thing that we thought about the concern about making this successful, like the pitch, what's that pitch like? Because you have be, I mean, I'm pretty sure the money is nice and all that, but I don't know if people are a willing to risk their careers on something that hasn't worked or um, they don't want to put that much money into something that's not going to last long for some of these, uh, actors that they that whomever they choose you know are they going to be there for the long haul i don't know and it all depends on how successful this is going to be this is a tough one brian i think they have a problems in that uh area uh in terms of making this uh making a little bit more progress well i don't know what kind of a world we live in where everyone is lining up to be a madam web we can't get <laughs> anyone to be a fantastic four man there's something wrong with that but I think you might be onto something a little bit with the stigma of the previous failed attempts and that, you know, by the time this movie comes out, we'll be close to a decade removed from, from the Josh Trank Fantastic Four. But if they've been stumping around, you know, like this year, maybe it feels too recent. Maybe people feel like, hey, I still have, you know, I, I don't want to be too close to that project because we just saw, you know, Suicide Squad, the revamped version, you critics loved it and audiences were kind of, eh about it you know and it's, I, still, I yeah, it's still there the proximity hurt the proximity hurt that film you know had there been no air version i'm con and you know obviously no pandemic but even with the pandemic i think if there's no original suicide squad and the gun suicide squad is the only one you had ever seen i think the box office would have been stronger i think the viewership yeah. on hbo max would have been stronger um, than it was so um yeah i don't know i think there i think there might be something to that um but it also tells me, like, I, I remain fascinated by the style of characters they're gonna they're gonna use here. Um, I, you know, I'm also curious. I texted you this, like, you know, the, the, the representation discussion is coming up a lot in different shows across Disney, across Rings of Power. I, you know, neither Fantastic Four iteration was entirely Caucasian, which obviously the, the comics were. I don't believe this one will be either. But I do think that's also like when you're trying to put this puzzle together, as I said, you have to get all four right. This is not like, okay, we've got one and then we're going to kind of work around that. It's, you kind of need to look at the four as a true unit. And yeah. so I think finding something that spans ethnicities and has the right age demographic that you're looking for, like that might be trickier than we realize. Because Ben Grimm could be a black dude. Right? He doesn't after he switches, he it doesn't matter, right? Uh but he has blue eyes, so it doesn't matter. It does matter. <laughs> so I don't I don't this is yeah, it's a tricky one, but it is what it I don't me, Brian, I don't care. I, I don't either. I'm just pointing out that I think it's with what we're seeing and I think the climate we're in, I think it's tough to imagine they're just gonna throw four white people up there and call it the, call it the fantastic. I mean, as I said, they didn't do it in 2000. I mean, Jessica Alba's not 100% Caucasian. And then obviously you had Michael B. Jordan uh, as the adopted sibling. Uh, or actually, you know, it was the other way around, right? Sue was the adopted sibling. 
mm-hmm. in the 2015 version. She was the adopted sibling. So yeah, I think it just stands to reason. And I said this to you, like you run the permutations and it's sort of interesting to see what your choices are. I actually don't think, I don't think it'll be Ben Grimm for the reason you just said, because once he becomes the thing and kind of stays the thing, it's not like he goes back and forth. Like yeah. he's cursed with that appearance forever. And so I don't think it will be him for that reason, because it'll look like a rock, no matter yeah, what yeah, yeah. you know color the actor is. So I think it's one of the other three. And I propose to you the idea that it might be Reed. That would be a bold choice. And I'm curious to see if the audience would, would how they would respond to that. But, I, it, and part of the reason they brought it up is they successfully introduced Jonathan Majors as Kang and nobody cares about his ethnicity these days because the performance was awesome. And I'm just pointing out if Reed is ultimately going to be Kang's foil, you know, not that they have to be the same ethnicity, but I'm just saying, like, if they wanted to try something like that, that he would be know, the ultimate, it's an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard anybody talk about it, but he's the odd man I mean, out. <laughs> and they wanted to keep they wanted to keep the siblings as like birth siblings yeah, of yeah, the yeah, same yeah, 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 ethnicity. Yeah. Like, you only got four people to work with, so I I don't know. It's just. I do think that's a factor in like in getting this right is like they're trying to figure that piece of it out. Um, so we'll see. But and I, I still think they're, you know, the age is going to be a very interesting choice. I mean, I think like that char- those characters could be in their 40s. Those characters could be in their 30s. Like they obviously need the, the actors to be around for a while. But, you know, you can you can take a younger actor and make them up to be older. That's not a problem. So I'm fascinated with those choices, like where they put them in their lives for where we see this movie. Yeah. Uh, Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff, Brian. Event going on with Fantastic Four. There's apparently for that right now, nothing. But interesting to see how far along are they with this? Who knows if we get a delay even. If we get a delay, you, you think? I mean, they put it far enough out there, but still, they have to get going on this to, in order to make that date, right? Because the date was what January or it's like fall. Of, I think it's isn't it? Is it early in the year? It's twenty twenty four. I thought yeah, it was early late in the year. Early in the year. Okay, so then it's early twenty twenty four. That's even yeah. That's even tighter. But I've always maintained that I don't think Secret Wars or Kang Dynasty are going to arrive on time. And so my my thought is that this movie has to come before those two by a healthy amount. So I think the most likely scenario is that those two Avengers movies appear later than you think, and that might give them more room to kind of release Fantastic Four a bit later than they're even projecting now. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about the lack of uh, progress on the X-Men, the mutants, um, and the Fantastic Four, something that we've been waiting to hear something about for quite some time since Kevin said, we don't have enough time to talk about the Fantastic Four. Yeah. We don't have enough time to talk about the mutants. Seems like there's just not enough time. And it's been, what, almost two years since he said that? That's crazy. He might as well have said it and be 23 years now. Would have been the same effect. Or probably even better. Who knows? He messed up. Kevin's like, damn, I should have kept my mouth shut. Well, I mean, I guess then I would say I can't imagine that we get past Comic-Con next year without them being on stage. Yeah. So that's yeah. got to be footage, maybe some initial footage, and they appear on stage. Yeah. How dope would it have been if he had never said anything about the Fantastic Four or the mutants, and then in Miss Marvel, we get our first introduction into that world? Yeah. This goes back to, like, I wish, like, I didn't mind the 
the use of the music and I didn't mind the cameos in Doctor Strange 2 at the time. Like they weren't amazing, but I didn't mind. I minded them more after Miss Marvel because it kind of upstaged that, which was the more impactful moment to where we're going. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. They, but there was an article the other day, you know, like that, that jingle, that music, apparently had its own rights issue it wasn't like it didn't come over with the rest oh, wow. of fox so like kevin basically made them pay whatever it took to get that music so that's why he's dropping that that's why he's <laughs> dropping that needle on that all the time because he's like we paid we paid top dollar for this <laughs> i was trying to get that piece and every time we say expert i'm a play <laughs> <laughs> Oh, snap. To see how annoying. I, oh, man. I think people will stop watching the show. Like, I can't I can't watch this anymore. Um, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the non-development of these uh, characters. Um, and we said it in the past, and, I, and I'll continue to say it. We're far, we're way, way far from the mutants, the X-Men being formed. That's gonna take some time. Fantastic Four may be around the corner, but like I think we 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 stated, um, there could be some issues there selling this to somebody who's willing to take on this role. Um, um, but let's see. Uh, let us on the conversation below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. By the way, my last thought on this, in the category of we called this a long time ago. Saw the other day Netflix doing the Assassin's Creed TV ah. series. And all I'm saying is, if, if you gave me, like, I want to pass a note to Kevin Feige and be like, yo, for the Wolverine Anthology series, take notes on this, because this, you can adapt to what we're talking about. But you talk about a, you talk about a game that is tailor-made for a Netflix series, I think that's going to be a high-quality... What? Everybody's going to be project. waiting for that. Everybody's going to be waiting for that. And it's crazy. We said, we said, yo, we... I'm telling you, man, they, they, they're watching our show on the low <laughs> and taking notes. Like, these guys are giving us everything. My job is so easy. Anyway, we'll see you next time.